you think about when you go to the store and you are shopping for food, you always you know, you look on the label, you want to know what's in that food. And I think the, that same sensibility to know what went into the products that you're surrounding yourself with, that you're breathing in and being around on a daily basis, is a really strong way to measure the environmental response of this project. The impetus was we did our project in New York, a commercial interior build out. It was the highest rated lead platinum building uh, built commercial interior build out uh, in that time. And then we did our DC office lead platinum. So they were very high performing build outs. And in both of those projects, toxins were sneaking in through the process. And so with that feedback, we started looking for a better way to account for materials and, and you know designing out toxins. And that's when we found the Living Building Challenge. The challenge was really like applying both the LEED criteria but also Living Building Challenge because NRDC wanted to achieve both. They wanted the top rating you know, for the LEED Platinum and they also wanted to have this Living Building Challenge. So we had our, our lead consultant took on the role of LBC consultant as well, um, and she went and did some research on how we can make it possible. And so they were able to work with um, the International Living Future Institute to figure out how we could do it in our tenant space. We focus on the materials, which is about um, going through every single product that we install in our space and, and asking what's in it and making sure that nothing that is on the red list, which is a, a list of the worst in category, um, it's basically toxic chemicals that go into our building products. So we have to ask all these crazy questions of manufacturers, these questions that they've never been asked before, like what is in your material? And it'll take them a little while to figure it out, but they're actually going back to their supply chains and asking what is in it and, and why is it there? And that's just change the way we've, we work with our contractors, our architects, and our engineers. It requires us to think differently about the process of design and to rethink what exactly is the scope of the project. And you could tell immediately after construction you walked in and it didn't smell. Like you didn't, there was no new car smell because that is the, the smell of VOCs. Um, and we didn't have that. We worked extremely hard to make sure we didn't have that. It's a way to kind of pressure to, to reject certain materials and to pressure industry to change the process of the way that they make materials. So it's a, it could lead to a very profound shift in the way that we think about buildings. The fact that they say living building is really important. It's a great analogy because a building isn't built and just left after day one. You know, you're going to live in that space and you're going to live and breathe inside that building. It makes a productive environment for its staff. It makes a clean, healthy environment. That's for certain. And so we're using those principles of how we built the space to continue to operate the space in the same way. And so I think it helped staff be impactful at their day-to-day -day jobs. To, which is to help the environment.